History of Estonia from 1920s to present day, from the Republic of Estonia to the re-establishment of the Republic of Estonia. The Republic of Estonia in the 1920s was a democratic republic with an extremely parliamentary system whose constitution was adopted in 1920. It created the 100-member parliament, Regigoku, which formed the government. The head of government, Rigivanem, literally stately elder, also fulfilled the duties of head of state, role of president, since no political party ever had a majority in the parliament and the party landscape was also very varied, governments often changed. On December 1, 1924, a coup attempt by the Soviet Union took place, where the Bolsheviks tried to seize power in Tallinn. However, this attempt failed, and since then, much more attention was paid to internal security of Estonia. Life in the country stabilized until 1930, when Estonia was hit by the global economic crisis. In the early 1930s, debates about constitutional changes had become very acute, as several successive governments were unable to bring Estonia out of the economic crisis and to control the corruption of the politician. Therefore, a new force emerged from the shadow of all parties, Union of Participants in the Estonian War of Independence. It was founded as an Estonian Association of Veterans of the Estonian War of Independence, abbreviation FOPS movement. Later, non-veterans were accepted as its support members. The organization was founded in 1929 as Anti-Communist Party. The referendum of 1933 adopted the constitution proposed by the VAPS movement, which created the power of a high power head of state, president. In order to prevent the VAPS movement from coming to power and to consolidate power, presidential candidates Konstantin Betz and Johan Leidoner ordered an undemocratic military coup. Betz and Leidoner jailed Andres Larka, the most popular presidential candidate, who was the candidate of the VAPS movement. Hundreds of VAPS movement members were arrested and, and Betz demanded the government to establish a nationwide state of defense. Political meetings and demonstrations were banned and VAPS movement was closed down. In 1935, the activities of political parties were also terminated and the Rigigoku was in a silent state starting from the previous year already. Democratic opposition was against the government, but failed to do anything remarkable to change the undemocratic and unfair government of Betz and Leidelet. Estonia's standard of living during the Republic of Estonia was comparable to Finland. A lot of people moved away from countryside to cities to work in factories. New towns were established, including Nume in the vicinity of Tallinn. In April 1938, a new constitution came into force, which was a little more democratic than the current rule of government. By this, Konstantin Betz was elected as the first president of Estonia. Elected is, in fact, a slightly misleading term, since the members of the upper chamber of parliament, who confirmed him as the president, were chosen by Konstantin Betz himself. Only the lower house of parliament was elected by the people. The constitution did not restore the activities of polit political parties, although opposition candidates also had the opportunity to get elected to the parliament. This order of government lasted until 1940.
Estonia's foreign policy during the Republic of Estonia was quite peculiar. In 1921, Estonia was accepted into the League of Nations. As Estonia was initially led by the socialists, they hoped for normalization of relations with Soviet Russia, but at the same time support was sought from the Western powers. The international situation escalated in the 1930s, when Germany and Japan exited the League of Nations and began to pursue clearly aggressive foreign policies. The Western powers, however, did not use decisive measures to restrain the aggressors, but sought to reconcile them. At the same time, the ambitions of the Soviet Union strengthened. As a result, by the end of the 1930s, Estonia was under the threat of invasion by both the USSR and Germany and there was no hope for help. No foreign country was so interested in Estonia's independence to risk the war in its name. On August 23, 1939, the Soviet Commissar for Foreign Affairs Vyacheslav Molotov and the German Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop signed a non-aggression tre treaty between the two countries. With secret addition of Protocol, they divided Poland. Finland, Estonia and Latvia went to the USSR's sphere of influence, later also Lithuania. Germany got the chance to start a war with Poland, which triggered World War II on September 1, 1939. On 17 September, Poland was also attacked by the USSR. During the Second World War, Estonia remained a neutral state. USSR's leadership accused the Estonian government of violating neutrality after fleeing of a Polish submarine from Estonian waters, demanding that its bases have to be allowed into Estonian territory. The Estonian government tried to counter the accusations, but eventually decided to accept the Soviet Union's order, and base agreement was signed on September 28, 1939, which marked the beginning of the Red Army's march to the Republic of Estonia. Initially, relations with USSR were more or less normal, although a major problem in the Winter War was the use of Estonian bases by Soviet aircraft to bomb Finland, closest nation to Estonians. But for political reasons, the Estonian government could not do anything about it. The situation became even more tense in June 1940, when Germany invaded Paris. The Soviet Union also decided to increase its territories and demanded that Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania have to allow additional troops to enter their countries. It was essentially an occupation, because soon the Soviet Union also demanded a change of government. On June 21st, the puppet government of Johannes Vares Barbaros took office, receiving his instructions directly from Moscow. Soon, the so-called elections were held, but only candidates approved by the Soviet Soviets could actually participate. On July 21st, the new puppet government made a decision to name Estonia a Soviet Republic and asked for its adoption into the Soviet Union. It came to fruition on August 6, and this ended Estonia's first period of independence. The Republic of Estonia had only existed for 22 years. What was the first year under Soviet occupation like? The first arrests in Estonia took place already on June 17, 1940. More than 1,000 people had disappeared by the end of the year, mostly members of former political leaders or of the Republic of Estonia, senior military and police officers, economists and cultural figures. Few managed to flee abroad or hide themselves. The captured people were convicted under Soviet law for acts committed in independent Estonia. Most were sent to Soviet Union's prison camps. Some were executed in Estonia. In 1941, arrests expanded. Anyone sus suspected of being involved in anti-Soviet activities, including farmers, workers and other common people, were imprisoned. No one could be sure of tomorrow. 95% of all those sent to forced labor camps during the entire occupation time of the USSR were executed or died because of diseases or starvation. During the first year of occupation of the USSR, 
41,000 Estonians were killed, executed, and murdered. On June 14, 1941, ethnic cleansing of Estonians began with mass deportation called June Deportation. Deportation took place simultaneously in Latvia and Lithuania. Adult men were taken to prison camps, many of whom were executed. Their families, wives and children, were forcefully resettled to Siberia. June deportation affected about 10,000 people from Estonia. The announcement of war between the Soviet Union and Germany was therefore clearly welcomed in Estonia. Of all Estonians deported by USSR, 59% died due to starvation and inhumane conditions. On June 22, 1941, Germany declared war on Soviet Union, and in less than a month, German troops reached the Estonian soil. Initially, the USSR was unable to organize any particular resistance, but used the burn land and punishment group tactics, which devastated the land. Everything that the Red Army could not bring to Russia was destroyed or burned. Fields, factories and many homes were simply set on fire. Cars, trains and even livestock were also stolen and taken to Russia. This of course further angered the general Estonian public towards the USSR. Several groups of Forest Brothers and other Estonian units took part in the fight against the USSR who sometimes cooperated directly with Germans. Initially, it was hoped that the Germans would allow Estonia to regain its independence, but soon, the Estonian nationalists were greatly disappointed. The Nazi Germany established occupation power in Estonia and hunted both communists and nationalists. Legal mobilizations were also organized in Estonia, and tens of thousands of Estonians were sent to the Eastern Front to the war. The occupation authorities also organized the execution of Jews and other people unsuitable for the Nazis in Estonia. During the German occupation of Estonia, about 35,000 people were killed or executed by the Nazis. In the spring of 1944, the front reached Estonia again, and the country was threatened by a second Soviet occupation. Now, the nationalists decided to support another German mobilization to keep the Red Army away from Estonia from as long as possible. Preparations were also made for the proclamation of Estonia independence, if circumstances allow. The Red Army was suspended for several months under Narva, but it did not change the outcome of the war. In September 1944, the German defense lines were broken. The German troops began to withdraw from Estonia, and now the Estonia nationalists were trying to regain the Estonian independence. On September 18th, Otto Thief's government took office, and on September 20th, the Estonian flag was hoisted to the top of the tall Hermann Tower in Tallinn. Unfortunately, the attempt failed, because the Red Army reached Tallinn already on 22nd September, and soon the entire mainland of Estonia was in its possession. German troops continued their resistance on the Estonian islands until November, while tens of thousands of Estonians fled to the west as refugees. Most of Estonia's German and Swedish minorities also left the country. By November 24, 1944, the whole of Estonia was under Soviet occupation again. The Soviet Union was not interested in restoration of the Republic of Estonia whatsoever. In addition to the executions and deportations of 1940 and 1941, new mass arrests began in 1944. The aim of the policy of violence was to bring society fully under Soviet Union's control. This policy was guided by the party, apparatus, and directly enforced by the security org organs. The number of people who were repressed between 1944 and 1954 was approximately 30,000. Those who were considered disloyal to the Soviet authorities were arrested and sent to a forced labor camp. Violent, 
violence policy peaked with mass deportation in 1949. Almost 21,000 people were deported from Estonia to Siberia the night before March 26. Most of the deportees were women and children and were mainly sent to Krasnoyarsk and Novosibirsk, some 4,000 to 5,000 kilometers away from homeland. Many Estonian families were shattered as a result of this ethnic cleansing. About 196,000 people, or about 17.5% of the pre-war population died in Estonia as a direct result of World War II, including both the occupations of the German and Soviet Union. If compared to the US population, it would mean that 22.4 million people would have died. For a long time, the majority of Estonians denied Soviet power, both passively and actively. In 1944-1953, the direct fighting of the Estonian freedom came from the Forest Brothers. These were the people who evaded the Red Army's mobilization, or simply the people who hid from the Soviet power, up to 30,000 people in total. The Forest Brothers were operating all over Estonia, killing Soviet activists, but at the same time, shops and farms were also robbed, which in turn increased the climate of terror of the countryside. It was a war after war, and had many victims on both sides. The resistance of the Forest Brothers over the years clearly showed that Estonia did not surrender to the Soviet Union without fighting. <laughs> Under the occupation of the USSR, the economy was characterized by the preferential development of war industry. The oil shale industry in Vidoma started to expand, the machinery and met metal industry was also expanded. Throughout the Soviet era, the emphasis was on heavy industry, which was mainly oriented to the economic interests of the USSR and not of Estonia. Industry and mineral extraction was disproportionately large and polluting to the environment, given the size of Estonia and the size of Estonian population. Soviet land reform me meant expropriation or nationalization of lands. The people's lands and homes no longer belong to them, but to the state. 9,027,000 hectares of land were expropriated in Estonia between 1944 and 1947. This was followed by the establishment of collective farms to frighten people. The mass deportation of 1949 mentioned earlier was carried out. National economic planning or controlled economy was also introduced. Requirements were imposed from Moscow, and these had to be met by countries. In the 1950s, Forest Brotherhood was replaced by activities of underground youth groups. Secret organizations were characterized by rigorous discipline, signs and handwritten leaflets. It was inspired by the activities of Forest Brothers and by the literature from the time of Republic of Estonia. One such organization was the Estonian National Union. The active resistance movements disappeared especially after Stalin's death, when conditions began to become more liberal. The large number of dissidents and numerous demonstrations showed that the aspirations for freedom had not disappeared among the Estonian people. As heavy industry was favored throughout Estonia, during the Soviet occupation, a large number of foreign workers, mainly Russians, were also brought in. Actually, this was illegal, because colonization of the territory of an occupied country was prohibited by internal international law. This method was part of Soviet Union's ethnic cleansing of Estonians. Most of the migrants moved to industrial areas in eastern Estonia, which used to be mainly Estonian before World War II, as well as to Tallinn. The countryside was covered by collective farms. During Stalin's reign, the entire Soviet Empire was separated from the rest of the world by an iron curtain. Trustworthy information was provided by foreign radio stations. 
some of which soon began broadcasting in Estonia. The opportunities for traveling abroad were initially extremely limited, but since 1960s, context began to increase. Of particular importance was the opening of the Dalin Helsinki ship line, which allowed Finnish tourists to visit Estonia and many Estonians to visit Finland. During the Soviet peri- period, Estonians tried to continue the folk tradition of playing instruments, singing in choirs, and dancing. One big cultural event was in 1947, the General Song Festival. Despite of red flags, communist propaganda, and much of the program in Russian, song festivals became unique mass events with national tinge even during the Soviet occupation era. The second anthem of Estonia was Lida Gudula's My Fatherland is My Joy, which almost always ended the song festival. Since My Fatherland, My Happiness and Joy, the Republic of Estonia's anthem and the Estonian national flag were prohibited throughout the Soviet occupation. By 1985, the foreign policy and economic stemmet of USSR was obvious. The gigantic state needed a reformer, Mikhail Gorbachev. Ultimately, however, such a policy of reformation actually meant the dismantling of the Soviet Union, opening the way for small nations to regain their independence. Things started to change in Estonia in the spring of 1987 when a politically colored phosphoride campaign was launched in protest against planned huge and environmentally polluting phosphoride mining in Viruma. For the first time, the broader crowd felt the power of cohesion. In the same year, the Estonian Heritage Society was established, which, in addition to heritage conversation, was also actively involved in politics. The Estonian National Independence Party appeared, and as early as 1988 it began to demand the restoration of Estonian independence. One of the biggest negative legacies of the USSR is its extensive repopulation of Estonia and ethnic cleansing of Estonians. During the First Republic of Estonia, nearly 90% of Estonian population were Estonians. But by the 1980s, Estonians made up only 60% of the Estonian population. This national catastrophe was also one of the greatest impetus for the restoration of independence. In 1988, another party-like organization, the People's Front, was founded, which included both reforming communists and ordinary people. Initially, the People's Front program was much more moderate. They wished for extensive autonomy of Estonia in the Soviet Union. Under the leadership of the People's Front, political demonstrations took place at the Song Festival grounds, with up to 150,000 people flocking in blue, black, white flags. The National Awakening culminated in September 1988 at the major event organized by the People's Front at the Estonian Song Festival grounds. It turned into an unprecedented national demonstration with 300,000 people. The call for the restoration of Republic of Estonia was also made public. Because of the demonstrations at the Song Festival grounds, this restoration of independence has been called the Singing Revolution. At the same time, a change of power was achieved at the Estonian Communist Party, with the conservative Karl Vaino replaced by the reformist communist Vaino Veljas. From the spring of 1989, the leadership of the Estonian Soviet Republic also decided to take part in national politics, and the blue, black, white flag was again hoisted on the top of the Tower of Tallinn, Tol Hermann. In 1990, nearly entirely free elections were held in Estonia, after more than 50 years, where the People's Front gained most seats in the Soviet Estonia's General Assembly. New government soon announced a transition period, which was to an end with restoration of Estonia's na- national independence. In March 1991, referendums on the, on the restoration of independence took place, with 77.8% of those who voted behind the restoration of Republic of Estonia.
The deepening internal crisis in the USSR culminated in a coup attempt by reactionary forces in August 1991, who made every effort to preserve the Soviet Union. On 19 August, tank columns began to move towards the capitals of Estonia and the Baltic states to seize power from na national governments. On the basis of an agreement between various political forces, the Supreme Council of the Republic of Estonia adopted the decision on the national independence of Estonia on August 20th, restoring the statehood both the U U jury and de facto. At the same time, international recognition was also sought for restored independence. As Moscow's coup failed by August 21st, it was also possible to put Estonia's independence into practice. After the declaration of independence, Estonia was faced with radical reforms. The country had to be transformed from a socialist economy back to capitalist free market economy. Democratic institutions and much more had to be created. Estonia managed to implement the restru restructuring quite quickly. In the summer of 1992, its own currency, the Krod, was introduced and a new constitution was approved, which came into force in the autumn of that year. This year, both the Rigigoku parliament and the president were elected, the last being Lennart Meri. Since then, the development of Estonia has been very rapid. The economy and living standard of Estonia has improved significantly compared to the Soviet occupation time. Before World War II and occupations, the Estonia's and Finland's living standards were comparable to each other. Catching up with the northern and western neighbors of Finland and Sweden will take a few more decades for Estonia. Since the restoration of independence, Estonia's foreign policy has been defining oneself as a Nordic country, like its closest Finnic relative nation of Finland, who was also considered Baltic before. World War II. The biggest challenge of Estonians has been, and still is, the demographic decline, which is apparent around the whole Europe, and globalization, which puts pressure on Estonian language, culture, and nas nation, since about 30% of people who live in Estonia are already non Estonians. But as we can see from the Estonian history, most every challenge and obstacle has strengthened the Estonian nation, nation and its vitality.